Hey guys, it is Miki Sama Unlimited, and today I'm tackling the Could This Be Meta segment. The Could This Be Meta segment is a segment where I make fake fantasy support cards so they're not real, and I basically talk about if these cards were made, how much it would actually dramatically shift the deck itself and make it much better, if not meta. So that's the, my favorite quality about the Could This Be Meta segment, is seeing how a deck could evolve just based off a little bit of support. I made three fake support cards for spellbooks, and I have one fan-made submission. So there are four cards to make spellbooks a much more competitive base deck. So I hope that you guys are all interested. I'm a huge spellbook fan. I always really love the archetype, and I would have loved to seen it more competitive. And a lot of people are going to be quick to say, well, it's not like they don't need support. It's the quality that they have spellbook and judgment. They just don't have it. And I mean, Konami can easily make an Aretta for judgment and easily make it a little bit less watered down and make it just more fair but they haven't done that and to be fair for spellbooks spellbooks right now are one of the worst decks you could pick up it would be if anything it would be like tier four five it's just it's not a good deck because it runs so slowly in the beginning that it takes so much momentum to build it up so i said you know you know it's kind of because the only thing the deck has for itself really is fate so i kind of said you know i kind of wanted to really throw my own twist in it i hope you guys all enjoy this video don't forget that the could this be meta is a hard hard segment for me to make so I hope that you guys all take this time just to click the like button. It would really make my day if you did it. Because if you guys would like to see it next month, I always like to see the video do extremely well. And then I say, you know, they really like this. Because sometimes, we, especially with the Cut This Be Meta, I get a little lazy with it. And I skip a month and I don't do it because I don't know what to talk about. But I really would love to do it. I actually decided to tackle only three cards per month instead of doing four in a fan-made submission. So I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I might just do a Monster Spell and Trap because it doesn't really matter. As long as I make the cards really good, it doesn't matter how how much support comes out as long as the support is good enough of me rambling i'm going to turn to the side so we can tackle these four new cards for spellbooks and we're going to talk if at the end of the day if they're going to be better or not so i hope that i do the deck some justice but i have played it for a long time so i feel like i know what that deck needs okay the first card that i made is called preacher of prophecy she's a fire level four spellcaster with 2000 attack and 100 defense and her effect is cannot be normal summon slash that must be special summon from your hand by shuffling one spellbook spell card from your graveyard back to the deck once per turn, during either player's turn, when a spell or trap is activated, you could send one spellbook spell card from your deck to the graveyard to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Now, personally, the best way, because I have to explain why I created these cards and what purpose they needed to be made for. Now, spellbooks run so slowly. They basically run almost no monsters. There are certain variants where you could use the fairy tale cards. You could even use Silent Magician. But this card is basically their version of Silent Magician. Because Silent Magician is good. But a good example is that this card is basically gives them that a little bit of spamming capability. Which the deck does not have outside of Freestus. So I said, you know, it's a good quality just to return a spellbook spell card. Which can't be abused in everything. And then you special summon her. And then you could constantly keep sending each turn like one spellbook spell card to negate an activation of something because that's only once per turn based you can only do that once per turn and then you know i feel like that's fair because in the end you build up your graveyard with spellbook spells which is good and she has 2000 like attack stat like that's really handy which the deck doesn't have and it's a good special summon to get the concept of just getting the spell caster so you could actually because you can't use most of the spellbook cards without having a magician spell caster on the field to begin with so you need tower to activate you need master to activate and i think a lot of the time depending on blue boy is not a good enough cycle so i think that preacher of prophecy would actually really push the deck and make it more offensive and being able to negate shit is always a good quality as well the next card i made is called spell book of wealth because obviously in my world this card would be a secret rare and be one of the cards that would make every person want to pick up spell books and its effect is if you control a spellcaster type monster shuffle one spell book spell card from your hand into the deck then draw two cards I was very inspired by Spellbook of Master meets Moray of Greed. I said, you know, I can't have the deck draw like three cards, but drawing two cards, because I mean, the thing about Spellbooks is Spellbooks do everything. Spellbooks have every quality of gaining attack points, being able to ram, being able to banish, being able to destroy, being able to draw thanks to Tower. The deck has all that quality, but the problem is, is that it takes so long to build up that momentum. And that's why I feel like Spellbook of Wealth is good, because you could easily go into Spellbook of Secrets, Spellbook of Mass, 
Master Spellbook of Wealth and then go from there and getting consistency and getting that ball rolling, which I think is extremely good because a lot of people rely on Spellbook uh, Crescent, which is not bad, but it gives you the cards at random, which at times is not good and it locks you from using any other spell card. So I thought Spellbook of Wealth would have been a very interesting concept and a card that would actually boost the deck dramatically. And the last card I made was Spellbook of Destiny, which is supposed to be an opposite version of Fate. Since Fate banished everything, I said, you know, it'd be interesting if there was a card called Spellbook of Destiny that would go with Fate that would return them back into the graveyard and did different things. So that's what I wanted to do with Spellbook of Destiny. Spellbook of Destiny is a quick play spell card. If you control a spellcaster type monsters, you could return up to three spellbook spells from your banished zone and apply this effect, depending on the number of spell cards returned to the graveyard for this cause activation. You can only activate one Spellbook of Destiny per turn. Its first effect, returning one banished card, draw one card. If you return two Spellbook spells, send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. If any of them are Spellbook spell cards, gain 1,000 life points for each. I thought that that was a neat addition because they have no card to actually gain them life points, and I thought that that'd be an interesting quality to give them a little bit of excavating, you know, discarding a few, because I feel like having them in the graveyard is never bad. It actually helps the momentum. And the last effect is destroy up to two cards your opponent controls. I actually thought that that was an interesting side, you know, view compared to what Fate did when it comes to banishing. You have a banishing concept, and then you have a destruction concept, because the only destruction that deck really has is Priest. Priestess. And to be fair, most spellbook players, including myself, don't really play Priestess at most at two. So I feel like if you're only playing her at two or at one, you're never really going to get a destruction quality out of the deck outside of just banishing shit constantly with fate. And now for the last card, which is the fan submission, I will have the fan that left the card over here so you guys could, you know, give him props for this. So I've read this card. I've seen a lot of spellbook cards that were submitted. This one was personally my favorite, and it's not because I'm a huge Naruto dork that I actually love the name, but I actually thought the card was actually really well made and really honestly good. And I didn't want to have a card that was chosen that was anywhere similar to the cards that I did. So I thought that this card was really unique and different. So let's get on into spellbook planetary devastation it's a quick play spell card and its effect is reveal three spellbook spells in your hand to increase the attack of all spellcaster type monsters on the field by 1000 for each spellbook spell card in your graveyard with different names while this card is in your graveyard you can banish this card to return one spellbook spell card from your graveyard to your hand except spellbook of planetary devastation you can only activate one spellbook planetary devastation once per turn to be fair, the only spellbook strength card that, you know, spellbook players have is spellbook of power, and the only way to maximize it is if you do power into master and then do its effect twice. And in the end, you know, spellbook of power is only good if you have that opening spot to actually do the hit. Because if your opponent has back row and does quaking mirror force or does something, you know, you ended up wasting power and not getting a surge out of it. I personally think that planetary devastation was a good way of gaining attack points, gaining strength, more strength than power, and then at the end of the day, getting you back some recyclability from it so i actually thought that these four cards were perfect to make the spellbook deck competitively without judgment i had a very good time making these cards because these cards were actually really different for me because i actually wanted to actually make one monster one spell one trap but I, you know it's spellbooks like they don't need trap cards so i said you know i really wanted to make them really good and i actually been playing spellbooks for a very long time so i really feel like they deserve support because they've been left you know with nothing for a very long time so i mean as a spellbook fan it's so you know it's just weird because I see so many other decks getting support and I just would love to see them get something. Even if they just got in a write off of judgment, I would be so happy. But, you know, who the fuck knows? If this video does extremely well, I will be making another Could This Be Meta for Battle Unboxers. I will be making three fake support cards to make that deck meta and one fan made submission. So go on the Facebook page and leave a fan made submission for Battle Unboxers. Don't forget to leave your inputs. If you think that, because the, the point of this segment is Could This Deck Be Meta? So if you think that these cards would push the deck back into the metagame, that's the important quality to say. So leave it in the comment section below, and I would love to hear your guys' inputs if you think these
these cards are good, not so good, if they needed something else, or you had a card that you thought would actually make them better. I would love to read it because I always am very interested to see your guys' inputs. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Hope you guys all have a great day, and thank you so much for watching and enjoying this video. And I will see you guys on Saturday. Well, I will be tackling my Six Path of Pain challenge. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll see you guys later.